Hey there, coming to you from the Fellowship Hall in our church. And uh, as you, some, some of you already know, it's in a little disarray for the demolition part leading into our renovation project. And so things look a little disarrayed in this room. There's all kind of stuff tore up and changed. And you know, I, I got to thinking, um, uh, there's a lot of change in our world today that can be uh, very unsettling. Today I heard, or maybe it was yesterday I heard, about a young man who's a Christian musician, apparently well-known, who's decided to say he doesn't believe in God anymore. And that just, that saddens me. That, that breaks my heart. I just hate to hear that. And, and I hope it's just something that he will figure out and trust God again. But right now, it's just sad to hear. And I, I hate to hear that for many reasons, one of which is it reminds me of a, a time in my life when I went through something like that. In my 20s, I'd been <clears throat> in seminary even. And during that time... Um, I began to have doubts about faith in God and about the Bible and different things. And I remember going through that. I remember starting to listen to the ways of the world and beliefs uh, that were different than how I was trained growing up and trained in God's Word. And I began to even think that abortion was okay and things like that. And I, re- I look back and I go, what got me there? And, and it was different things, different things that I listened to. Um, but you know... I, as I went through that time of my life, doubting and began to wander, I quit seminary and so forth, I wonder what brought me back. I think there were people who were praying for me, like my parents, I'm sure, and others, who prayed for me through those days that God would not give up on me, that I would return to faith. I think about people I respected who believe. In God's word. And I watch them be faithful. That helped. And I think about how. I changed where I was getting my answers. Instead of just looking for the smart people in the world. Who have all the knowledge and academics. Academics for my answers. I began to realize. You know there's a lot of good Christian men and women. Who are just as smart. Who have great credentials. Who have the academic knowledge. And they have better answers. That help me. Trust God and in His Word, the Bible. That's, that, those are things that made a big difference to me. Seeking answers from Christians. You know, it's easy in this world to expect the world to give us great answers. I mean, the world has wealth and creativity and great ideas. And so sometimes we're drawn to the wrong places. We're reminded in 1 Corinthians 2 that the person, it says, the person without the Spirit, meaning God's Spirit, they don't accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. In fact, they are foolishness to that person. He can't understand them because they're spiritually discerned. So, you know, I just say that to those who might be doubting today, who might be struggling as that young man. Where are you looking to get your answers? To people who are in darkness instead of those who are in the light? As we're going through this renovation in this uh, church building, There are things that are changing. One area, uh, the new offices, is almost completed. This area has been demolished a bit, and soon they'll start renovation. Another section, they haven't even started the renovation or demolishing on. And so we're in different phases. There's transition time. It's a little unsettling in a way. But one thing that is not changing, and the cross on this wall reminds me of it, One thing that's not changing is God loves you, God loves me, and He died on that cross. His Son Jesus died on that cross for you and me. And a lot of things can change in this world. A lot of questions and doubts can come our way. You can count on Him. He loves you so much. The one that breathed life into you, who created you in all of your wonder and unique spiritual or otherwise talents and gifts. This one loves you enough that He gave His life for you. Since he cares for you and me that much, that helps me trust him. I can't always explain or understand everything. I don't have the answers to every doubt or question or quandary. But I know he does. The one who died on the cross does. And I trust him. I trust him when I'm struggling with doubts myself. I hope if you're listening or watching, that if you're struggling with doubts, even if you're thinking there's no God, I hope that you will be looking for answers in the right places. First, look for yourself. Don't rely on other people to do your homework for you. Do your own homework. 
dig in the Bible, dig into deep, into, into things written or, or brought to you by good Christians who believe in God, who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, who trust God's word. Look to them to help you with your questions. You know, one man said to Jesus in Mark chapter 9, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. <laughs> I've been there. You've been there. Maybe you know someone who's stuck there. You know what it says in the last book of the Bible? Lots of things in that last book, Revelation. If you look at chapters 2 and 3, John, as he's writing for Jesus Christ, this revelation he sees, he writes seven letters to seven churches. And in every letter it says something like this. To the one who overcomes, and then there's a promise. I will give this or this will happen for them. To the one who overcomes, to him who overcomes, to him who overcomes, to the one who overcomes. Seven times. Don't give in to all the things that the world has to say. Overcome. Give in to God who made you, who loves you. Trust His Son Jesus who died on the cross for you. Follow Him by faith and you will live. May God bless you with whatever you're facing today. He will walk through it with you if you trust Him.